<clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? Uh, it's been a while. Um, just wanted to come on um, and do something different for our last podcast, per se. Um, usually we have uh, an all audio, but today I just wanted to come in and talk about uh, some things we got uh, this up for the upcoming year. And also uh, to thank um, our guests from season two for coming on and um, giving us their wealth of knowledge. I think it's so much fun talking to athletes, um, coaches, and people in the industry um, about sports and getting their stories and um, educating the community about the do's and don'ts of recruiting and how it be um, um, not, not only an effective person, but uh, a great student athlete in your community. So um, again, thank you for um, the guests coming out and, and talking with us. Um, but we wanna take this time to tell you about some things that's, that's coming up um, in 2023. Um, a couple of different events that we wanna talk about. The first one is called uh, Safety Day. Um, and we have a huge event um, coming up in March 25th. It's around March Madness uh, Safety Day. And I'll, uh, I'll read a statement that we, we, I think we already put it out about our partnership with Charleston County government. Um, we're excited to be partnering with Charleston County government public safety and want to thank you for coming on board. Charleston County Public Safety partners with Day Foundation to bring Low Country Community our event, Safety Day. The mission of our partnership is to educate student athletes and raise awareness about public safety. We are also creating open forums for discussions, developing action groups for continued safety initiatives, and designing career paths in our community. Their expertise will be extremely beneficial for our young attendees, um, as they will have the opportunity to learn about CPR, what to do in the case of a natural disaster, and much more. And I'll tell you a little bit about the importance of public safety and why we choose to have this as a focus in our event. Um, let's say, for, for instance, student athletes are traveling, going to the beach, and uh, someone got something stuck in their throat. Well, no one's in the, no one in the car knows how to do CPR, I mean, that's a problem. You know, I think um, people can save save lives just knowing how to um, do CPR and perform those type of actions when needed. Uh, another situation is a family emergency. You know, kids are home from school, parents are not home yet, and um, one of the kids, I don't know, fell and hurt themselves, right? Kids will probably call um, 911 versus, you know, calling the EMS. You know, they had all different apps and resources um, to help families and kids in need. And we just don't have that type of information at hand. So um, I want to thank Eric, Wax, Eric Watson um, for allowing the public safety uh, services and community come in and helping us out with this event. Now, the extra part, extra fun, the additional fun part about it is the free throw contest. Um, we're having a free throw contest for ages 10 and up um, at the College of Charleston TD Arena. Um, and the free throw contest is very dear to my heart. Uh, being a national ranked free throw shooter, I think that's one of the part of the that's part of the game that's really, really needed. Some like importance of field goals um in football games, right? Um that craft is, is uh, that skill is very much important in a game of, of basketball. But some details on the event will be March 25th uh, from 10 to 1. We'll have registration at 8.30. And then at 9.30, we'll have the different public service, um, public safety services come out and talk about what they do uh, from natural uh, fire and, and disaster, uh, the DMV, um, police. Uh, we have a lot of information out there for parents and and kids to uh, to get. Um, we also got a, a a a watch party later on that night, uh, six thirty to eight thirty, at uh, the alley. 
And I want to thank David Crowley for coming on board as well. Um, we have some more some more interesting details to tell you about the event at the alley, but um, we'll do that in, in, in a couple of weeks. Um, but want to give a shout out to our sponsors, um, Coastal Creek of Charleston, um, National Land Realty, um, Kids on Point, uh, and Chick-fil-A. Uh, so uh, thus far, those are our supporting sponsors that's really going to help this event um, be effective. The other event that we are working on that's, that's going to be effective is a uh, I know a couple of years ago we did a, a, a huge presentation at the uh, Satili Theater talking about the power of a student athlete and how important um, student athletes need to know their importance, right? Um, so we have student athletes consultations where we work on um, just role playing of different scenarios that helps that help kids be socially competent. And, you know, before, we came out talking about mental health and mental health is a huge deal. And I think it gets, it's a bad stigma with that terminology because people think it's, you know, it's full of meds or you got to talk to somebody all the time, or you really got a, 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 an issue. But I think mental health is a byproduct of kids not being socially competent. Um, so you may ask, well, what is socially competent competence? Um, and the definition for that is, uh, Social competence involves the ability to evaluate social situations and determine what is expected or required. And I'll say it again. Social competence involves the ability to evaluate social situations and determine what is expected or required. So you think about mental health, um, what I mean is a byproduct of not being socially competent because kids don't know how to talk, approach their coaches if they're going through a situation, right? So you can take that from an employee not knowing how to approach their boss in a situation. Kids don't know how to work out details, um, conflict, you know, resolution within their teammates. So that could be the same thing compared to employees, right? I think if not only kids, but if, if people know how to um, be competent in all situations, um, then I think the world would be a whole lot better and some of these conflicts, you know, wouldn't be happening. Um, I, I, this is another competent situation is, you know, knowing how to do CPR in a, in a situation that's needed. That's being competent in that, in that, in that situation. So we want to bring some of those things along when we having these um, discussions. Um, registration will start in January. Um, we will have our classes, our courses at the Dream Center in North Charleston. Um, thanks to Seacoast for, you know, and um, hosting our events and giving us an opportunity to, to teach the kids and the families about um, the power of the student athlete being socially competent, what to do, um, talking to parents and families and what to do as a uh, as an elementary school, middle school, high school, these are certain things that parents need to know what program to put their kids in, you know, to continue the development of they're trying to um, be a collegiate athlete. There's steps they need to take and not just, it don't just happen that way. So Day Foundation serves in the community being that soundboard, getting the information to the parents, to the athletes on what to do. And uh, sponsors for that would be uh, National Land Realty. Uh, Jason Watts has been a huge uh, integral part about uh, making this happen. So we appreciate him as well. The final, not final, but the last, not the last, but um, the next program we got going is our travel basketball that starts in March. And um, you know we're big on development, huge on development. So that's one of the the programs that we provide um, to families because we 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 have a lot of videos, a lot of a lot of content out there about parents being sidetracked on the importance of travel basketball, not doing it right, playing for clubs and programs that kids are not aren't eligible, they're not passing the grades. 
um, nutritional focus is not there. Um, so it's no, there's no end game to some of these programs that the kids are involved in. So, um, and I'm not saying my program is the best program, but I think we want to give your, give your, uh, give the parents enough information. So when they're approaching these organizations, they ask the right questions. What's my end game? Um, what kind of tournaments are you playing in? Um, do my kid have to have a GPA to play? Because if you don't have all these things, then you're just throwing your money away because you're not going to be recruited because, you know, for one, you're not recruitable because you didn't have the academic um, foundation to go along with your athletic resume. So um, we'll have uh, three teams, have a third grade team, a uh, fifth grade team, and a sixth grade team. Um, tryouts will be March 6th and March 8th. Uh, two days for fifth um for the third um on March third and fifth on March sixth and then March eighth will be the sixth grade uh evaluations. If you need uh, any information on the tryouts or travel basketball, please email me at uh, dayfoundation at gmail dot com and we'll get that out to you. Um again I want to thank you for um, engaging. Thanks for following. Thanks for being part of the Day Foundation's uh, family for the last 22, 23 years. Um, we're picking up steam and, and, and finally finding our niche and what we want to do in the community, how we want to make that work. So again, thank you for the support from the businesses, the community, the parents, the students, the whole nine. All right. Um, until next time. We'll see you soon. You have a great day and uh, tell somebody you love them. It doesn't cost you anything. Peace.